In this demonstration, we're simply going to take a brief overview of Adobe Animate, formerly known as Flash. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, launch a file that I've supplied to you, and we'll just talk around some of the features once I open that. It is an ActionScript 3 file. Let me maybe go through some of these file types that we have here. We have HTML5 Canvas, which is uh, very friendly for all the uh, iOS platforms and so on. We have WebGL. ActionScript 3, which is the traditional SWF format that Flash would output. And we have various AIR formats for desktops and mobile devices. We also have the option of outputting code here, which we won't get into today, of course. But what I'll do is I'll just go File, Open. And I've already downloaded the supplied file. And I'll go grab it off my desktop here. And it's called uh, OneFirstAnimation.fla. So it's a simple file with some uh, stuff already created for you. We're not going to get into it today, but we do have what's called a movie clip on stage if I click on this wheel here. And the uh, short story is it's, it's an, animated, sorry, an animation contained inside of this little box. We have two layers currently on the timeline below. Our timeline has a playhead, which I can scrub back and forth. And we can have any number of layers to contain our content. So right now I have a background layer and a layer holding the wheel. Now you notice when I click on the layer it highlights and it also highlights all the content on that layer on the stage and I can see a little blue marquee indicating that this is currently highlighted. Now the background I don't believe has any real content on it but it's just that white backdrop there. Now over here we have our array of panels. Some of them are collapsed by default, my properties and my library panel are expanded open, but I could collapse those as well with these little double arrows. I'll open it back up again here. Now up here, it has various, I guess, work sets, if you will. I am going to keep it on essentials, but we do have other combinations of panels that would automatically be opened. But we're going to leave it on essential for this. And of course, on the far right, I have my array of tools. We'll get into some of these today, but obviously not all of them in this one demonstration. Now, just some of the basics, as I was saying, is we do have our uh, timeline below, our stage here, and our panels. And these panels can expand when we click on them. And maybe I'll just go over some of the panel features. You can see here that even here it can be collapsed. If I click on it, I can actually grab, I guess I'll call it the title bar tear it away and that way I am creating a floating panel so it's independent now it can still be collapsed but it sort of has its own little unique floating characteristic if I want to reunite it with one of these panel sets if you will I grab it by that top bar and I can drag it in here and you can see it creates a little blue line and I can insert it either with one of these groups as you can see here or create a whole new group. And you can also see there's little handles on it so I can actually adjust its stacking order as well. It's a little tricky, let me show you that again. If you want to adjust the stacking order without combining it, you do need to go sort of in between where I see that blue line appear and then drop it. I will put it back, I'll try to put it back in the top where it was, there we go. So again, I can do that with all of these panels, and you can see that we actually have two columns of panels here that are collapsible. Again, our tool set over to the far right. Now let me talk about zooming in and out briefly. I could use the zoom tool, and I could use the hand tool to move around, but I'm going to show you some keyboard shortcuts that are a lot easier to use on the fly. Zooming, as in many programs, is on the PC, it's Control plus to zoom up, Control minus to zoom down. On the Mac, it's Command plus, Command minus. So let me just go over to this wheel and zoom up to it. I'll just click on the stage. Sorry, I had to click on the stage there. And then zoom up, zoom up. Now it looks like I've lost my image, but I can drag my image area around by holding the space bar down. And you see it turns into the little hand which drags my image. And then I can just start to move things around. So combining basically zoom and move, I can always zero in on very specific locations in my graphics. 
on the stage that is. Now I have another cool feature in the zooming. If we look up here at the top, you can see the zoom level. Right now I'm looking at 100%. I can go down here and choose a different percentage. But the one that I really like working with is called Fit in Window, which will resize it to fit however big my window is. Even if I resize my window, this will adjust accordingly because you can resize these panels. If you go in between them here, you can see little double arrows which allow me to expand certain areas and shrink other areas, as you can see. But if you notice, when I'm shrinking it, the stage area will resize accordingly so that I'm always seeing all of the content on the stage. And that's the fit in window feature, which again, we can get through this panel up here. So I'm going to leave it on fit in window for now. We have our rulers up here. We have some guides, one guide that's currently on the stage. And we'll get into rulers and guides later. I think what I'll do now is I'll just show you uh, what's called the motion preset, just to kind of cut into some of the cool features of Adobe Animate. What I want to do is I want to take this wheel, which when we play it back actually will be spinning because I've already created that for you. But I want to have it drop like gravity's grabbing it and have it bounce on the ground. So I'm going to write, highlight it to start with, drag it upwards. Now if I want to drag it exactly straight up, I will hold my shift key to constrain it. And I'll bring it almost to the top of the stage area. What I want it to do is to drop and bounce like a ball. I happen to know there's a preset that will do that. So I'm going to go into my motion presets. It is this one here with the three balls on it. If you don't see it in the panels, as with any panel, you can always go up to window and you'll find it in there. There's motion presets. It is currently open. If I click it, it actually pops it open. But I can also close it here and open it here. And again, I could tear it off. I'm going to leave it nested here. Now you have basically two folders in here, one called default presets, one called custom presets. You can actually create all kinds of animation, save it as a preset, which is very nice so that you can reapply that without having to do it from scratch. And you would do that by clicking new preset here. We're not going to do that today. We're just going to use an existing default preset. So I will open up that panel and you can scroll through here and you can see that there are quite a few to choose from. And the nice thing about these is if I highlight any one of them, I'm going to get a little preview of what it does. Now I've got one here called Bounce Smoosh. I happen to know that's the one I want to apply. And you can see what it does. It drops and then actually gives you like a little rubber ball feel at the bottom with some gravity. So to apply it, I would have had to have selected my item, which is currently selected. Of course, select the preset motion and click apply. It's as simple as that. I'm going to collapse this now. Now you saw when I clicked apply, a motion guide appeared. And that gives you an indication that number one, it did work. But if you look down in your timeline, and we'll get into this more in depth later, but it actually generated a series of keyframes indicated by these little diamonds. And those are all keyframes built into this motion preset. So to preview it, there's two ways. I can just do a preview on the stage or I can actually do a runtime preview, which is more accurate and will show any nested animations such as this wheel spinning. So I'll start by just showing you the uh, cheap preview, if you will, which is hitting your return key and the playhead will start to move. And you can see the playhead moving and you can see the action on stage. And I can do that again as often as I want. And it plays back. Now, it only plays back in a limited fashion. I was mentioning this was a movie clip and a movie clip in essence is a self-contained animation, which again, we will learn how to do in another lesson, but just know that it's a self-contained animation. I'm not seeing the wheel spinning when I just use my return key. So if I actually want to see this play out properly, we would go up to control, test movie, test in, in animate, or I can actually test in browser. I'm just going to say test in animate. It actually generates an SWF file that I can see up here by the name. 
So I've actually created a file through the testing, which will be in the same location as my original file. So in this case, it's on the desktop. But uh, if you look at the actual action on the screen, we're getting that motion preset, which is like a bouncing ball. And it will repeat infinitely, unless I were to put a stop command at the end of the timeline. But the advantage of this preview is that I can actually see all of the nested animation. As you see here, the wheel is spinning quite fast, and it's also adopted that motion preset. So this is the most accurate way of previewing your work. It's actually, you're actually generating a file, and you're previewing that file in this little window. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for that is Control Return on the PC or Command Return on the Mac. And I've just hit that keyboard command and it executed it once again. So that's just a, a little quick you know, demo of Adobe Animate, again formerly known as Flash, and just some quick results with some of the pre-built tools. And I, I would like you to try this one out today.